Um, so, uh, this is sort of like the third video in the sort of vocal hygiene-ish uh, type series here. So this is about, for performers, uh, if you're an amateur performer, like an avocational performer who does it in the community theater, or if you're, um, you know, on the professional track, or you are a current professional, this is your video. Um, because there's an aspect of vocal hygiene that is pretty important for singers, and a lot of that has to do with performance pacing and how you manage yourself throughout the day of a performance. Um, so, a little bit about pre-performance routines. Uh, there's a lot of very fun rumors, once again, of famous singers who have these like diva routines, right? Like they have to have such and such type of snacks and this kind of water and blah, 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 all backstage and they have to like have their day all planned out a certain way um, or else they throw a fit or singers who require certain microphones or the air conditioner to be turned off and stuff like that. Although that's kind of legitimate. Air conditioners can be actually pretty drying and a lot of, for the opera singers out there actually, Micro, different microphones do sound very different, actually, so it's not super diva for someone who sustains themselves using a microphone to have a, a microphone they prefer, you know? Um, so they really rely on, like, the sound guys, the sound equipment, the microphones. It's all got to kind of work pretty well for them or else it'll throw them off their game. And that's totally legit because mic singing is a whole different game than opera singing. It just is. Mic technique is a different thing. So... I feel you singers who use mics. You just keep on having your favorites and bringing your mic to gigs and wanting your sound to be balanced because that is a big part of your performance. I dig it. You know, it's just like if an opera singer walked out with a dress that didn't fit, you know, if you're like having to hold up your dress the whole act, you probably wouldn't be very happy, right? So good mics are sort of like that. Um, well, bad mics are kind of like a dress that doesn't fit. A good mic is like a dress that does fit. There we go. We got a hold of that analogy. All right. So, um, so that pre-performance routine people have isn't always about being a diva. Uh, I think a lot of it can be about gaining a little control over what's happening in your life that day because performing is a little stressful. Even if you're excited about it, even if it like just fills you with life and you just love it to death, that is still, there's still good stress, right? Like your primitive brain, your little amygdala area, your little fight or flight response is still responding, okay? Your sympathetic nervous system is still gonna respond to the fact that you are about to go out and onto stage and be in the spotlight doing something that you need to do at a high level, high caliber. As far as your brain is concerned, you're gonna go out there and fight a bear, right? I think some of you guys might have heard this before. But um, although the audience hopefully is not a bear um <laughs> you know your brain there's really no way to tell that part of your brain that it's like just chill out shh, right so i think a lot of times those routines is kind of our way of maintaining a feeling like we've got this this is no big deal so if i can get to the theater this many minutes in advance and make sure i have you know i drink this much water before i perform and i have my little apple slices or my grapes or whatever it is as your snacks, um, you know, that's what you do. Personally, I had a big thing about like eating when I was gonna eat my meal before a performance because when I get really nervous, my stomach, like there are certain foods I do not wanna have eaten before I go in my costume, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so usually like if it was an evening performance, I would not be nervous until maybe the afternoon. So I could eat a pretty nice breakfast. I could have a pretty decent lunch, like a healthy lunch. And then I usually didn't want to eat dinner though because I was a little too nervous for it. So I would just snack. I'd snack on like fruits, things that were very hydrating. That was just my thing. Um, I do know people who are like totally fine chowing on a burger when they're nervous. So if that's you, that's kind of awesome actually. But yeah, that was not me. So um, <laughs> I don't eat big meals. I will eat a meal after because I'll be hungry after, but not before. Um, that's my diva right there. Uh, <laughs> no hamburgers before a performance, so diva. Anyway, so, um, you know, it's about that. So keeping yourself in shape and like just feeling like you're ready for it, you know? You gotta kinda get yourself ready because your brain thinks you're about to go do battle. You gotta feel ready for that. Um, and that's totally fine. So it's not about being a diva. Um, and then there's something also for hygiene purposes, something fairly important for, I think especially like 
uh, contemporary singers, like rock singers, um, and probably also, yeah, for voice and for, for opera and for musical theater as well, but it's learning to pace yourself as a singer, even in the midst of a performance. It's pretty important. So, um, pacing means, like, you're not going to give it your all, like, right off the bat. So, if you are in a band and you get to plan your sets, okay, and you got a gig, you got a big gig doing, like, a two-hour show, okay, um, what you're going to want to do is try to plan your sets such that, you know, you're not putting all your, let's say, power ballads or whatever up front to, like, wear you out the rest of the night, and you're also not putting them all at the end when you're already tired, right? Like, the stuff that's really tough on your voice, you want to kind of pace those throughout the night. It's kind of like interval training, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you sprint for a little while and then you go back to a slow jog. You want to do that for your voice as much as you can throughout the night because it just helps your stamina as you go. Um, and for people who do theater, um, oh, and also a lot of times uh, contemporary singers and pop singers and rock singers, you're usually free to transpose down if, if your bandmates and stuff can do that easily. Um, so that is something that is acceptable. You can transpose things down, but if you don't want to have to transpose down, just try to pace yourself a bit, you know, give yourself a little more stamina, save those big money, like screamy high notes for, um, like your metal screams, you know, if that is taxing to you, save it, save it, you know, use it sparingly and save it for like a big finish or something. Right. Um, just don't do like, like a hundred of them in the night. If, if you find it taxing. I actually taught someone who did not find them taxing. He could actually do them with a surprising amount of ease in his throat and uh, could probably do them all night long. So I was like, this does not apply to you. You can just keep on your metal scream like every song. Crazy, but rare, rare. That guy was rare. Okay. Um, for theater performers, pacing has a lot to do with... Um, you know, if you're singing the big love song that has the transposition and the big high note at the end, okay? Like, knowing the places in that song where you don't need to be giving it your vocal all, you know? Knowing where you can lean a little bit on having a microphone if you happen to have one. Um, where you can just be sort of in a softer voice mode. Like, indoor voice mode, right? Where it's nice and easy on your throat or something, right? There's places in songs usually where you can do something like that, you can make, please make it meaningful, please put dynamics in there in a meaningful way, but also you can use them as pacing. Um, and same thing for opera singers, there are places during a role where you get to kind of take the, you know, you get to like take off the gas a little bit on your voice, you don't have to be quite as getting it to the back of the hose, you know, like recitative or something, um, where you just don't have to be quite as like, I have to be loud for this. So it's learning those places. Um, that's part of learning your roles, part of figuring out how you're going to get through the role, and also can overlap with your emotions and how you're interpreting it as well. It's usually a good idea. Um, so there is that as well. So pacing is pretty important for hygiene, but really, really important for stamina throughout a performance. Pre-performance routines are usually pretty important for just feeling like you're ready for the performance, you've gotten your, yourself hydrated, you feel like you're good to go. Once again though, um, pre-performance routines really can vary depending on what you're doing and who you are. If you're the person who can chow a burger while you're really like nervous, fine, have a burger, whatever. Um, and you know, <laughs> what that does to your body is between you and your doctor, I don't, you know, whatever, have a burger, it's fine. I like burgers. Let's, let's just eat them. It's good. With some bacon. Yes. And cheese. Oh, now I'm hungry. Um, so have your burger. Um, that rock guy I knew that did really good metal screams, who actually had a pretty fine voice, like, as he was older. He came to me as an older student, but he was, like, totally in fine shape. His routine, apparently, when he was young, was, like, I'm going to down a couple of beers and maybe take, like, an illicit drug and go sing. Maybe he wouldn't have wanted to continue doing that, like, in his 50s. But, you know, at the time, apparently it worked for him. So, you know, there you go. Um, but for folks in theater and in opera that need more, like, vocal clarity, especially if you're doing a role where you need to sound pretty, um, <laughs> you usually just want to make sure you're in as 
good of a shape as you can be for that day and you're ready and you're mentally ready to go and feeling all prepped. But what's important I think to know about pre-performance routines is beyond like just the hydrating and stuff, if it doesn't go perfectly, you know, like if you if there if your train is delayed and you don't get to the theater in the time you want to get to it, you can still have a good performance. You know, your performance does not is not hindered on perfect pacing or, you know, throughout it or, you know, definitely making sure you wear such and such pants the day of, okay? Those things can be very comforting. But if it doesn't happen, just know that you have it within you to still give a fine performance, to still get into your character, go for the truth, really express something, okay? I think that's really important. So if you're kind of panicking because you didn't have the perfect day, it's okay. If you feel like your voice isn't 100%, that's okay. Usually it's not. You know, you might feel like your voice is a little scratchy, it's a little dry, it's a little <laughs> okay that day. But if it's otherwise a fine day, you're going to be okay. You're going to do fine. Just focus on what you need to do. Focus on expressing what you need to express and communicating what you need to communicate. Um, and just try to ignore when things aren't exactly the way you want it to go that day, right? Um, particularly, just don't be mean to anyone backstage just because things didn't go perfect for you that day. That's just rude overall, right? Taking out your stuff on other people. It's usually a good life tip to just, you know, keep it on the, keep it on the down low. When somebody asks how you are, you can be like, ugh, I'm a little scattered because da da da, I'm telling the story. But don't, you know, just like jump down someone's throat or something because, eh, it's not usually very appropriate. Anyway, that's my two cents, or however many cents, what is it, 11 minutes worth of cents? 11 cents? 11 cents? I don't know. I really need to keep this, like, silliness under wraps. Um, I once had this dream that this was going to be, like, the super professional blog, but <laughs> as if. Totally not. I am a slightly crazy science girl, so, haha. -ha. Anyway, um, I will see you guys next time. Hope somebody out there finds this helpful. Goodbye.